Well, welcome back to the medical overview section uh, where we're going to discuss the things out of the Kansas Board of EMS standards on medical overview. And this kind of hits the last several sections of patient assessment, so I felt it fitting to just do medical overview uh, to hit the last few sections. So you notice that in patient assessment, we only covered up to pretty much finishing the primary assessment, but we did nothing in secondary assessment and reassessment. Well, in our secondary assessment, we're focusing on our head-to-toe exam, we're working on vitals, and we are also doing our history obtaining of that uh, past medical history, as well as the history of present illness. And we use some acronyms to obtain this information, and two of those acronyms we use are SAMPLE and OPQRSTI. SAMPLE stands for Signs and Symptoms, Allergies, Medications, Past Pertinent History or Past Medical History, Last Oral Intake, and Events Leading Up To. So when we do SAMPLE, it's important to have a thorough history and get a balance of the knowledge and skill to obtain that. Uh, you have to have this nice flow to work through it, and that's why we use SAMPLE. It also, by using the acronym SAMPLE, it helps to ensure proper care will be provided for each and every patient. Now, not every time can you obtain information from a patient because they might be unresponsive. So we want to look for pill containers, medical jewelry. Uh, we want to talk to family members or bystanders. Uh, we want to look for any medical devices and constantly be having that scene assessment, that scene size up. Now, if we have a responsive patient, we're going to obtain it directly from the patient unless they have an altered mental status. And if they have an altered mental status, we might need to obtain evidence from the scene, like the pill containers, the medical jewelry, family, and talk to family members or bystanders. So sample, we're obtaining their history of their allergies. We're obtaining their history of their medications. And one of the biggest questions you need to ask when someone says, I take ibuprofen or I take metoprolol is why? And be relentless with your why question to find out why. You may not understand what the medication is for, but if you ask why, they may give you their understanding of what they're taking that medication for. Just because metoprolol is normally for blood pressure, they may be taking it for something else. Then we also do the evaluation of pain mnemonic OPQRSTI. OPQRSTI stands for onset, provocation, or provoke, quality, radiation, severity, time, and intervention. So when did it start? We want to focus on what the patient was doing when the problem began. And then so you might ask them, what were you doing when this problem started? And then provoke. What provokes the problem? What makes it better or worse? Um, quality. Quality, we want them to describe it. They, we want them to qualify it for us. We want their own description of the problem. Can you describe your pain or discomfort? What does it feel like? And is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it piercing? Does it feel like your friend is sitting on your chest? Is it steady? Does it come and go? R, what's the region it's in or does it radiate somewhere? Focus on a specific area of the pain or discomfort. And questions, can you point with one finger where you feel pain or discomfort the most? Does the pain or discomfort radiate to any other areas of the body? Severity, on a scale of 0 to 10, or how does their face appear to you? 0 being no pain, 10 being the worst pain you ever felt, or their face is grimacing and there is so much pain. You can use different types of pain scales to determine um, and then ask them, how would you rate your pain when it first began? And then has there been any, been any changes in your pain? And then time, uh, focus on the duration of the problem, pain, or discomfort. When did your problem, pain, or discomfort first begin? And since I've got here to take care of you, has it gotten better or worse? And then I for interventions, have you done anything for this pain? Then we get our, our baseline set of vitals. And, and all of this is simultaneously going on in our secondary assessment. But our baseline set of vitals, which we've talked about before, but our blood pressure, our pulse, our respirations, our pupils, our temperature, our blood glucose, all those different types of vitals, that's what we're obtaining. 
And then we want to make sure we do a head to toe assessment. And so what areas do we need to assess in our head to toe assessment? Well, head to toe. We're going to start out at the head. We're going to look at their scalp. We're going to look around the eyes. We're going to look in the eyes. We're going to look in the nose. We're going to look around the nose. We're going to look in the mouth or around the mouth. We're going to look in the ears and around the ears. We're going to look at the neck. We're going to look behind the neck for any step offs. We're going to look for JVD. We're going to look for any tracheal deviation. Um, and tracheal deviation, you're not going to see. You're going to have to feel for. Uh, you're going to look for clavicle problems, any, any broken clavicles. You're going to feel for sternums, any pain on the sternum. To have them take a deep, big, deep breath in, you're going to feel their abdomen and palpate all four quadrants. Uh, you'll just palpate gently on the pelvis. And then you're going to palpate the, your long bones going in opposite directions. And all of this is your, your secondary assessment of your head to toe looking for any other things that you might have missed from your visual inspection of the patient. And so a good head to toe exam focuses on inspection, palpation, and auscultation. That again is looking at it, that is touching it, and that's listening to it, listening with our stethoscope. So we also want to look for symmetry. We want to look for any drainage, any blood leaking. Uh, we want to look for broken bones uh, in, the, in the neck. We want to look for any step-offs, any accessory muscle use. They're really st straining and using those muscles, any medical jewelry. It's just getting that further in-depth look at the patient. And make sure that we also expose, lift up their shirt, pull down uh, their pants, and maintain privacy. But you know, get a good exposure of the patient to, to take a good look at them. And then finally, you know, why is reassessment of the patient so important is when we reassess a patient, we need to make sure that the vitals we took, the medications we gave for our interventions, the uh, history the level of consciousness, their life threats have not changed. They've, they've continually gotten better. Have they gotten worse? Do we need to change what we're doing? That's why reassessment is so important when it comes to doing a patient assessment on an individual. That kind of concludes our medical overview. And now we're going to dive into our medical emergencies.